Alright, I'm going to work on the old Ford again today and uh, we'll show you how, uh, how far I've gotten on this side so far. This side uh, pretty much got, gotten all done and uh, painted up the floor and everything and uh, put in the little patches that we needed here and up there and over here and uh, even back here I put a piece of metal in and put some fiberglass over it so uh, all I have to do is uh, do the body work here I put fiberglass over this earlier patch and uh, just got to do a little bit of body work to that and uh, this side will be done I removed all the paint down here already and removed all the paint this is a uh, bare steel it doesn't look like it but it's all bare steel right up to here and when I did the roof I stripped this all the way down and all this is stripped so this this side all we have to do is that and uh, it'll all be done but now I'm gonna move over to the other side there take a walk around here with me and we're gonna have to do the same procedure basically just the same this side isn't that bad the, the mount itself is, is worse let me get down here on my knees. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Yeah, you see this one? This one's all gone completely. That's that's the mount. Look how much that little rubber crushed down there. Crushed down to nothing. So the, the mount is worse. And the, this is all done over here. I remember the, I paint, painted that up and everything. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't paint over this uh, here because I have to weld to the back of it. And I might have to replace that. Uh, but anyway. The floor in this one itself is, is actually much better. Let me take a let me open the door here for you. Alright. Yeah, this one's much better. This is this floor is uh solid. Solid all the way up to the, the front here. On a four-wheel drive, you see this little, this little square thing? That's cut out and there's a plate there and it's a, a battery box on the four-wheel drive floor pans. But anyway, yeah. Uh, like I say, this this floor paint is much better. The only, only place it's bad is is right here in the corner, right where the the mount itself is, and uh, the floor right down here, and maybe about uh, three inches up the wall here. I got a hole, but uh, I think I'm going to replace the whole thing because it's just as easy. You know, it, it might be a little thin over here. We don't know, but. Uh, and the rest, like I said, the rest of it's all solid, but but we got the pan, might as well replace the whole thing. Because it was actually pretty easy to, to weld up. And like you see there, right up to where the just about where the seat rail goes. So I don't know if I'm gonna film this because you guys already seen the other side there, but uh, maybe I'll film it anyway, and if you don't want to watch it, you don't watch it, right? Alright, so then uh, if we get done that, we'll have to fix this. This here is rotted out, so we'll have to put a piece there. And it's not like I say, same procedure as the other side, and re replace the seat bracket here, and back here. It's funny how they they all rot out the same way, but that's where that's where all the dirt lands. I'm pretty sure this uh, this truck must have been a farm truck, and the guy lived on a dirt road or whatever, and, and drove it up and back, and all that dust and dirt just you know migrates migrates to the lowest spot. So. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's jack this thing up and uh, start cutting. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, cut the head off of this uh, bolt here and uh, drive it through the bottom. That way, uh, I could I could actually uh, jack the truck up. I'm not gonna jack the truck up itself, just the cab, and uh, put some blocks of wood up under there. That'll support the cab so it uh, doesn't go anywhere when I start working on it. Yeah, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's a, a dull, dismal day. And uh, like I say, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're supposed to get a uh, little bit of drizzle around uh, 10 a.m., and then it's supposed to clear up a little bit again until maybe uh, 2 o'clock. So uh, we're going to try and get a little bit done today. And uh, let's get to it. All right, let's take a look see where we're at here. Alright, yeah, I cut the floor out with the ground there and cut this little section out here that was rotted and uh, this is all solid here and this is solid and let me, t let me take it back here and we'll show you what we've got out here 
here's the, the mount and here's that crush tube that I made for the other side and uh, they actually have like a a thicker metal piece here that was welded to the the rest of the the, the cross member here so maybe we'll make one of them on this side I guess that helps you if you flip the truck you know it has a little more uh, uh, meat to grab onto there but uh, I don't plan on flipping this but then I guess you never do yeah, this thing fought me all the way you know I was gonna take it out as one piece but then I uh, I wound up uh, cutting the back half off here and it's a uh, it's a shame I cut this out because this piece here is uh, is uh, perfect there's no uh, no rod in it at all and it's uh, strong you know but uh, it'll make it easier to put this uh, front piece in so oh well usually when you, you cut a truck up you try to keep as much of the original parts as possible but uh, hey you know it is what it is now so all right like i said it's just a rough cut i'm gonna have to cut this out here and cut all the welds or the, the spot welds out and then cut this closer and then uh, I guess what I'll do next is is make this side plate here that way we have something to weld to alright alright yeah we're gonna pack it in for the day so uh, we got all this cleaned up down here we still have to put a piece of metal in there and uh, clean this piece up here and cleaned all the goop up and tar that was on here so all we gotta do is uh, make our final cut and then put that in so you yeah, are doing pretty good I'm uh, happy with the progress but it's starting to rain out now so uh, like I said we're gonna pack it in so uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow all right it's the next day and uh, it's uh, starting to dry up here and uh, let me show you what we're gonna do here first thing we got to do is uh, get this plate down here Looks like it's about uh, 14 inches, uh, maybe 12, 14 uh, from the bottom to here, and then uh, 8 inches to the front here. So we're going to have to replace that. We, it looks new. This, this, all this metal is new because we replaced it when we, uh, when we reconstructed the outside of this. That's what you have to do when you, when you reconstruct something. You have to do it one piece at a time so you have uh, patterns to go by. And uh, when I painted all this up, I left this. I didn't I didn't paint over the seam sealer there because I, I knew I was going to be welding to the outside of it or the back side of it and it's that's probably going to come off anyway and uh, we're just going to scrape that off whatever whatever gets damaged by the heat and then uh, reapply it there so uh, that's what we're going to do maybe I'll uh, take a picture from the other side so you can uh, see it better all right so there it is there you see it goes from the, the bottom of the truck to about uh, a quarter of the way up the inside of the, the panel there, the inside panel. So uh, that's the first thing we got to do because that's going to hold the cross brace. That's that's how uh, all these trucks are held together, all laminated. You know, the the just pieces of thin metal welded to each other. So uh, I think that one piece there gonna has like uh, three pieces welded to it. That's why that's why all these trucks and uh, old cars rot out. You know moisture gets in between the laminations and uh, it's, uh, it's the end of it so all right enough uh, talking let's make a pattern all right yeah I'm going to try and show you different stuff than we did on the other side so uh, we don't get redundant so what we're going to do is I'm going to make a template here and uh, I'm going to make it out of paper and I might transfer it to cardboard later but uh, for now it's just going to be paper or I may just use the paper template here I don't know but anyway we got a, a 90 degree here, and uh, that'll make things easy. So I get some paper, square paper here, and some tape. And then the paper's a little bit lump, limp today because it's a little damp out, but uh, I'm gonna try and stay out of your way. But I'm gonna put this in here, because this is gonna be a uh, butt joint. Ok. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. You're never going to get it perfect, but uh, the closer you get, the better. And then I don't know if you can see the outline here. But then what I did was, uh, you get a dirty finger or I had a pencil here, or some pencil lead, you know, I, I, uh, I put it on here and then you, you wipe it on your finger. And then you can just go around the edges. I don't know how well you guys are, are seeing this. Yes, I'm trying to keep my head out of the way. And I'll give all your all your other edges that you need. See now, even here, this well, that must have moved on me. Well, that's okay. But anyway, I'll give me a chance to let you see this. I'm going to take it off and redo it on piece of paper. But you actually see how how defined that edge comes. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, Put another piece of paper there and redo that, and then we'll continue on from there. All right, yeah, I redid that. I didn't like the way that was positioned. So uh, where were we? All right, yeah, I got the main main section there, and I'm gonna have a little foot sticking out here, and uh, so what I do is I'll I'll cut a piece. Enough that I need tools of the trade. They're fine Italian scissors here. Then I get no piece of tape here. Put this where I want. say piece it together it's only paper and then go down here and uh, put marks so let's take this off of here so that should be our template so I'm going to bring that in there like I said I cut that and I, I may put it on uh, cardboard and I may not but we'll see all right, got us some uh, 12 gauge sheet metal here. That's pretty thick stuff. That's uh, about an eighth of an inch, which for sheet metal is uh, is pretty thick. You know, you, you hardly get any flex out of it at all. But uh, that's what I used on the other side here. I, I cut this out. This, this, this cut out here is the piece for the other side, and uh, I was happy with that. You know, when I made this piece here, I cut it out with a jigsaw. And somebody asked, you know, why, why you got a, you got a plasma cutter? Why, did, why didn't you cut that out with a jigsaw? And uh, when you use a plasma cutter, you know, you get this dross and stuff, and you get a, a, a jagged edge. I mean, I mean, some people have better uh, plasma cutters and are better at it than I am, but uh, it, uh, I had, I would, I had to clean up the part and clean all the dross off it and stuff like that. Plus, I had to take the plasma cutter. Yeah, I do all the work on the back of the pickup. So I had to drag the plasma cutter out there and a, a 50 foot 30 uh, pound uh, extension cord and an air hose. And it was just, uh, it's just easier to cut this out. And it's, and it's a lot more precise, you know. You know, I wanted the, I was going to weld the edge here and uh, I wanted it precise. So uh, I'm going I'm to cut this out with, uh, with the jigsaw. Even though this one doesn't have to be that precise, I just don't feel like lugging all that stuff out there. And uh, you know, this is just as fast. There's only one. This edge right here is the only one that has to be uh, right on. Not right on, but uh, pretty close. These other ones, you know, you get hit with a grinder when you're done. But uh, that's to answer that question. Why I didn't? I don't. I don't use the plasma cutter all the time. You know, and, and it's really it, it. It doesn't take long at all to. To cut sheet metal with a, with a jigsaw, so uh, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna tape this down and lay it out. And that's another reason I, I use the the Posca pens too. 
you know, the, the tips here. Well, I was going to open that and show you, but the, the tips are, are just so much finer. You know, it gives you when you when you're going to butt weld and stuff. You know, you only you only using a fine line. Uh, you want a, a small gap. You know, less than a sixty fourth of an inch. And uh, when you when you make every all your tolerances close like that, it makes it a lot easier to weld up. So, all right, let me uh, tape this down and we'll uh, trace it out. I right, got to tape down a couple little sections here just to hold it in place. And uh, so you can do this with the paper instead of making cardboard. You just gotta be careful. This gives you a much finer line, plus it's paint and uh, it won't wipe off like the sharp it will. Right. See right there, the paper buckled. That's why sometimes I like using the, making a cardboard template first, but uh, it's okay as long as you catch yourself. Right, let me finish tracing this out. Alright, yeah, I can cut this squiggly line with the jigsaw and then just cut this piece off here and then take it over to the bandsaw, make things easier. So, let's see how this cuts. Alright, I'm going to finish cutting this and then uh, we'll see you guys over the band saw. We're happy the way that turned out. Now, uh, no clean up here or nothing. We just have to go uh, give it a test fit. And there's going to be some uh, minor, minor adjustments we have to make, but uh, it goes without saying. All right. Yeah, it's actually fitting pretty well. Sorry about the lighting. You know, I got a lot of shadows and uh, stuff going on here, but uh, we're doing the best we can. Yeah, it, uh, it's clamped in over here, and that's all flush. Uh, what I have to do is. A uh, little little touch up right on the top here, and I'll probably do that to the the panel itself in the truck, and then that'll come up. I can I can move that up a little bit because I got a little titty sticking out. Once I grind that off in the other one, but as far as flush goes, it's uh, it's flush over here, but it, it can't go in here because it's a little titty. And then you know it's nice I I can actually get in in the door here and clamp that, uh, and it'll pull that right in. So. Uh, I'm liking it, you know. From here, you can you can tell it's fitting well, but uh, we'll get a we'll get a long shot, and yeah, it's going to look like there's a big gap, and looks like it's sticking out, but uh, it's all going to fit in nice. So uh, all we have to do is uh, weld it in place now. See out here, it's all flush, all the gets welded up right on the edge. So that's all that's perfect out here. I have to get a quick look here because the automatic exposure going to kick in. There it is. So, uh, so we're happy with it. So uh, let us weld that in there and uh, that'll be done. All right, get a little change of plan. 
It's a shame because it's uh, turned out a beautiful day. It's uh, like uh, 80 degrees out here. Sun is shining, birds are singing, dogs are barking. All right, I just got a phone call, so I'm gonna have to leave. And uh, good thing I got that before I started setting up all my welding equipment. But uh, that's life, right? Life isn't all about the YouTube TV. Stuff has to get done, so uh, that's where we're at. So uh, we're gonna call this one. Uh, we're gonna be done for the day. All right, all right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Second thought, maybe we'll just uh, we'll wrap this one up and uh, call it a video. You guys probably got it about 20, 25 minutes, so uh, we'll call us a short one and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.